But where do you do that? Do you do it during the change? No, you do it way in part of the history. And and what Peter just said is that, that you have to document this stuff and what they do and how they change and, and have configuration management systems and things like that in place. But you don't do that when you're thinking about change. You do that five years before the change happens. And so that's I've, I've been involved in that. I go in and write procedures sometimes, and I walk through and develop flow charts for people. But and. Well, it's not even that reason. It's not even that reason. Because it, it, in a lot of cases, it's a, and another law of systems thinking and systems engineering is that the problem's not always with the people. Oh, no. The problem's sometime with the system. So if you can document the system and improve the system, then you can make a big impact and not only that, but people flowing into it as you proceduralize it or as you document it can can come in in case that person wins a the lottery. They win a the lottery, they leave your company, and the last thing they're thinking about is come back to company and tell you how to do what they did, right? So you want to create that history of, of documenting that before you ever get to that point, right? And if you're a new manager in a position, that's probably one of the first things you should do is document what's going on. But that was a good point, Peter. Okay, so now, reassignments time frame. You're the group, right? We're going through this change. It's painful. Some of you are going to lose your jobs. Can't help that. But what we can do is we can, we can get some... Um, we can get severance. We can get people to come in and help you write resumes. We get people come in and help give you advice on how to find other jobs. And we can all use our personal networks together to help find you a job. You know, or whoever, Right? So if we handle it that way, it becomes a team exercise, and it looks like, to me, if I'm here, you know, and I see this, I'm thinking, well, at least I'm going to be treated fairly when I have to go, <laughs> you know. And, and have you been there? Have you thought of that? And there's people who do this. I have a really good friend, uh, Patricia Leonard, her, her name, and I'll introduce you to her. She does exactly that. Goes in and helps people deal with the stress, helps people write the resume, gets people looking at it from a positive point of view, because there's things they want to do. And if you give me enough severance, I can start my own okay, business. Okay, time frame. Um, I think we just said that. Let's see, rephrase that. If, if we're going through this time and I'm saying, can you hold together for one more year? Can you hold together for six months? It makes a lot of difference. Because if I think this is going on forever and I can't see the end if I know the project schedule that's happening and I know what's going to happen after that, then it makes a big difference. If this is ongoing, then my stress level goes up. Okay. Uh, communication. Got to communicate. If you think you're hiding a change in order to make the change better, what you're doing is you're messing with the chemistry. What you're doing is you're giving the rumor mill all the power and you don't have any power because the, the rumor is going to be a lot worse than real life. Okay. Now, after the change, you're preparing for the next change. So you got to plan and lessons learned. Got to develop leadership. Got to develop team participation in all this whole process. Now, what do we do good? What do we do wrong? How can we do it better? Because if you can get your anger out, then you're less likely to shoot somebody. <laughs> in some cases, that's what happens. If you can get your anger out, you're less likely to cause friction and, and cause more problems. So team participation is this whole thing. Help them to tell you what went wrong. Okay? And, and remember, you went through a process where you allowed someone else to rate you on, on the disc profile, I think. Well, you didn't like that, the answers, but it helped you to be stronger. Right? And I was working with somebody at, at K25 in Oak Ridge. And they went through this process of a 360 type rating. So he thought he was a really good forward thinking manager. And the moment he saw what people really thought about him, he, 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 he came out and explained it this way. And he was, this is a few years ago where men just don't cry, right? And he, he said to the group, he said, you know, I cried. Because I thought I was doing everything I could. I thought that people liked me. I had a different self-image than, than I actually was real life. And so he says, but when I came to grips to that, you know, this is a fairly tough guy. To, he says, when I came to grips to that, hurt him so bad. When I came to grips to that, then he became the top-rated manager in all the system the next time around. But you can use it as 
a way to improve or you can use it and fight it. What's that? Retaliate. Yeah, retaliate. You can, yeah, you can punish people. But if you punish people, I guarantee things get worse. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm just kidding, kind of. Um, communication again. Communication goes through the whole thing. Did this help any? Just give you an idea. Okay, so that curve, that's how you minimize that curve. Now, here's what you're fighting. You're fighting... Um, people don't even see this. I mean, you're the only one that really knows this is going on because you've gone through this class and you kind of have common sense and you can see it from a different point of view. You're the manager, right? So you're here. You know you want to get there. To everybody in the whole world, it looks like you should just get there. So no one sees that. Okay, let's put it this way. In, in public life, um, the President of the United States, the Congress, will make decisions, right? If they did it with the purest heart, if they did it with the best decision makers, if they did everything they could possibly do, let's pretend, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, let's pretend like everything was perfect. They're there, the public sees that, painted a beautiful vision, what's going to happen? What's the public going to think when it falls? Made a bad decision. What's the public, what's Congress going to do? Well, they're, they're going to vote in a new Congress. Who's going to make another change? What's going to happen when they make another change? Going to go through another dip. Another change, go through another dip. And so, it doesn't matter who's president. <laughs> if you can't go through your whole plan without having to change in the middle of it, it's going to be a problem. And every, every Iraq... You know, or whatever. I'm not saying that the, it was a great decision. I'm just holding that aside. But every time you do something like that, there's going to be a dip before there's it come, you come out of it. And so if you change it, it's going to make it worse. It's going to make it worse. And then whether that was a good decision to start with or not, it doesn't matter. You, if you go through a plan and you have a vision you're trying to get to, it's going to, you're going to expect a dip. It's going to be pain. Every, um, you know, um, every change... So every time you hear the word change, it's going to be have a negative part to it. It doesn't matter. Obama uses the word change a lot. There's going to be a negative part to that no matter what that change is. No matter if it was, if it was well defined or not. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you give them a benefit of the doubt, um, and you change in the middle of the change, it's going to be worse. It's, going to, it's, it's just going to be whenever you do a change, no matter if it's good or bad, it's going to have a negative. The bad one may not have a positive outcome. But if you go through another change, expect another dip. And it may be a longer time before you get to a positive outcome. Now, that said, you still have to be flexible, right? You still have to... Anybody that ties into... Uh, because the, it's like in war <laughs> or in a battle. Anytime... You make a decision and you react to that and you implement that decision, there's an enemy out there. And the enemy makes a decision too. So the enemy reacts to your decision, which means you have to react to that. You can't just stay on a steady course. If you move this way, the enemy goes in front of you, you gotta move this way. You gotta outflank them, you gotta do something different. You know? So every time you make a decision and there's an enemy, like a competition, competition with your company you cannot go with with here we are and here we're going to be we're going to go through this dip you got to understand there's still some decisions to make okay it's it complicated it becomes three-dimensional